Ryzen 7600X is the best value mid-range gaming CPU in fall 2025, but getting the right CPU and GPU combo, motherboard and RAM, it can be confusing. Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. This fall update to our 2025 Ryzen 7600X PC build guide will cover everything that you need for the best Ryzen 7600X gaming PC build, including the best graphics card for the Ryzen 7600X, the best RAM for the Ryzen 7600X, the best motherboard for the Ryzen 7600X, and more. And we'll give specific build templates for both a maximum value Ryzen 7600X build and a premium Ryzen 7600X gaming PC build. Remember, if you get value out of this video, please give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel, and of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. Let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows licenses and that terrible activate Windows watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key and get a Windows 11 OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 30% off during their Black Friday sale. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code and boom, Windows is fully licensed for a crazy low price, and they have Microsoft Office licenses too. Use the links in the video description. So which of the Ryzen 5 CPUs on the AM5 platform should you get? The Ryzen 7600X, 7600, 7500F, 7400F, or the 9600X? Well, recently TechSpot compared all the available Ryzen 5 AM5 CPUs with an RTX 5090 across 12 games at medium and high details. I will link their full comparison article in the description. The main takeaway here, at higher details at 1080p or higher resolutions like 1440p, or if you have a more mid-range graphics card like the RX 9060XT 16 gigabyte, maybe an RTX 5070, these CPUs are gonna perform very similarly. You should avoid the Ryzen 8400F. It has limited GPU PCIe connectivity. That's bad for a gaming PC. Also avoid the Ryzen 7400F. It uses thermal paste under the CPU lid instead of solder. That means it runs super hot and you may need to deal with the CPU in the future to change the paste, that's just crazy. My advice, go for the cheapest of the Ryzen 7500F, 7600, 7600X, or 9600X. After getting your GPU, if you still have some money left over, then up the CPU. In the US, the 7600X, it's usually only about $10 more than the 7500F and has wider availability, so I usually default to the Ryzen 7600X. So what's the best graphics card for the Ryzen 7600X in 2025? Remember, we get the most FPS in a gaming PC build when we get the fastest GPU that we can afford, then just get a CPU that's not gonna bottleneck it. Now we go through this in detail in our best CPU and GPU combo 2025 video that we just updated for the fall. So check that out for a deeper dive as to why. The Ryzen 7600 is a great choice for mid-range GPUs that would otherwise be bottlenecked on a more budget tier CPU like the Ryzen 5600X. The lowest GPU that I'd recommend for the Ryzen 7600 is an ARC B570 10 gigabyte GPU or the RX 9060XT 8 gigabyte or RTX 5060 8 gigabyte. But those are pretty low end and for about a thousand dollar build, you can easily get an RX 9060XT 16 gigabyte, maybe even an RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte GPU, which are the best budget 1440p graphics cards out there in 2025. From here, the Ryzen 7600X pairs really well with mid-range to upper mid-range graphics cards like the RX 9070 16 gigabyte, RTX 5070 12 gigabyte, RX 9070 XT 16 gigabyte, and the RTX 5070 Ti 16 gigabyte. You could even go with an RTX 5080, but this is an area where we'll definitely see some improvement by going with a more powerful X3D CPU like the Ryzen 7800X3D. Right now that sells for around 320 to $350. The key here is in invest in the GPU first. Then if you have some money left over, increase the CPU. And with future upgradability, you will be able to drop in and upgrade with a future Zen 6, possibly even Zen 7 CPU. Our build uses the three fan ASRock Steel Edge and RX 9070 16 gigabyte in white with RGB on the top of the GPU and the fans. ASRock sent this over to us, so big thank you to ASRock. So what's the best RAM for the Ryzen 7600X in 2025? Unfortunately, starting in September 2025, we are now in a shortage for DDR5 RAM due to massive AI data center demand. Companies that make the RAM chips, they are switching production to higher margin AI server memory instead of desktop consumer memory, so we have seen prices nearly double and they will likely keep going up for a while. Previously, I would have recommended a two by 16 gigabyte kit of DDR5 6000 CL30 RAM as the sweet spot. Now, if you can afford to do that without having to compromise on like your GPU choice, then go for it. And at the time of filming, kits can be had starting around $140 US. You can consider getting slightly slower RAM, 
DDR5 6000 CL32 kits or CL36 kits, they're probably fine. They're not gonna reduce gaming performance by that much, especially when you're mostly GPU bound for more budget graphics cards. Now you don't want to exceed 6000 speed because the Ryzen memory controller, it can't really handle it. It will then run at a less optimal two to one ratio. We can also consider getting a two by eight gigabyte kit of RAM. So 16 gigabytes total, because most games run fine on 16 gigabytes, it's only really a handful of titles that occasionally micro stutter with 16 gigs. Just remember that current DDR5 memory controllers cannot do four sticks at higher speeds and they often crash randomly with four sticks. So choose two sticks kits now and if you upgrade in the future. You also wanna to remember to go into the BIOS and turn on the Expo or XMP one-click auto overclocking profile, which will run the RAM at its full rated speed. I'll leave a list of the best value kits that I can find in the video description for you to check out. At the time of filming, I'm seeing DDR5 6000 CL30 2x16 gigabyte kits with no RGB, like the Patriot Viper Venom for about $130, the Silicon Power Zenith for $140, and the Kingston Fury Beast for $140. Kits with RGB start a little bit more, like the Acer Predator Vesta 2 for $145, Lexar Ares for $145. T Force Delta for 150. I'm also seeing some DDR5 6000 CL28 kits mixed in around those price points, like the Patriot Viper Elite with RGB for $150 or G Scale Flare X5 for $155. But pricing is really fluid. In our build, we use the Silicon Power Zenith RGB for $145 in white. So, what's the best motherboard for the Ryzen 7600X in 2025? We recently updated our best Ryzen motherboard 2025 video for fall, including that a lot of new B850 motherboards been introduced lately, so I will leave a link to that in the video description if you want to check it out. Ryzen 7600X gaming PC builds are really flexible, from great budget 1440p gaming builds to more mid-range and upper mid-range builds with higher-end graphics cards. So we're going to go through a range of motherboards that best fit your build. Starting with the chipset. Now AMD, they've made a total mess out of these names, from A620 to B840 to B650, B850, X870, then some of them have an E, but others don't. So here's your cheat code. A620 and B840 motherboards do not allow the use of AMD's auto overclocking feature called Precision Boost Overdrive, and we want to enable PBO to maximize our performance, so we're going to skip those. We want to focus on B650, B650E, and B850 motherboards, which offer the best value for gamers without paying for expensive X-series motherboards that have extra stuff on it that gamers don't need. All B650E and virtually all the B850 motherboards also have a PCIe Gen 5G GPU slot for the same price as the B650 motherboards, which use the older PCIe Gen 4 GPU slot. While it's unlikely that's ever gonna matter, an RTX 5090 runs just fine on a PCIe Gen 4 GPU slot, we might as well get the free upgrade. Note that AMD is in the process of discontinuing the B650 chipset, but the motherboards are gonna continue to receive support updates to BIOS and drivers, so that shouldn't deter you from buying one if you find one on sale. Finally, for ASRock motherboards, they've seen significantly higher than normal failure rates for the Ryzen 9000 X3D CPUs. The failure rate is still relatively low and does not seem to extend to Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, even the 7800X3D, nor does it seem to significantly impact non-X3D Ryzen 9000 series CPUs. Now, ASRock claims that they have fixed this issue with their latest 3.40 or later BIOS update, but only time will tell. I personally would not worry about it because you're likely won't upgrade the CPU for a couple of years, and it seems like even if it isn't fully fixed right now, they'll fully fix it by the time that you go to upgrade. But if that bothers you, then buy a motherboard from ASUS, MSI, or Gigabyte instead. Motherboard value picks start at about $110 to $140 in the US, and they include basic audio, two to three M.2 slots, decent but not amazing VRMs, and solid but not amazing rear panel USB connectivity. The ASRock B850M Pro-A, it's a great value micro ATX motherboard with decent VRMs, three full band with M.2 NVMe slots, four high-speed USB ports, including a Type-C, then four USB 2.0 ports, along with nice black styling. And there are both Wi-Fi 6E and non-Wi-Fi versions. You can also check out the B850M-X Revision 2, and that's a similar motherboard with slightly cut down features for a little bit less. There's also a bunch of slightly different versions of this board for a little bit more. Really, any of them are pretty good. Now, ASRock kind of dominates the budget segment, and the currently cheapest competitor B850 motherboard is the Gigabyte B850M Eagle for around $150 with nice styling, two full bandwidth M.2 SSD slots, 
four high-speed USB ports, including a Type-C, and then four USB 2.0 ports, and a built-in rear I.O. shield with Wi-Fi 6E. They also have the slightly nicer B850M Gaming X for about $10 more. MSI has the Pro B850M-P Wi-Fi with similar feature set, except it upgrades to Wi-Fi 7 and in more basic styling for around $160, though it has been on sale for as low as $130. For ATX size mid-range motherboards, top picks include the ASRock B850 Pro-A with very solid VRMs, four M.2 NVMe SSD slots, the one's only PCIe Gen 3, six high-speed USB ports with two Type-Cs, and six more USB 2.0 ports, just tons and tons of connectivity. Along with great black styling for $140 and a Wi-Fi version for around $30 more. When it's on sale for around $150, I really like the ASUS Tough B650E-E with basic audio, three full bandwidth M.2 slots, decent rear panel USB connectivity, but really nice styling. I also like the Gigabyte V850 Gaming X Wi-Fi for around $160, great VRMs along with three M.2 NVMe SSD slots, all of which have heat spreaders, six high-speed USB ports, and two USB 2.0 ports, nice styling, and a built-in rear I.O. shield, and Wi-Fi 6E. There's also the ASUS B650E Max Gaming Wi-Fi and the MSI B850 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. These motherboards are not quite as good feature-wise, but they often go down on sale to around $150. At that price point, you might want to pick them up. The MSI's got fewer USB ports, while the ASUS has weaker VRMs, both have two full bandwidth M.2 SSD slots and one half bandwidth M.2 slot. But the ASUS comes in both black and white PCB. For premium motherboards, we are looking for three full bandwidth M.2 drives, at least two of them having heat sinks, built-in rear I.O. shield with good USB connectivity, upgraded audio codec to ALC 1200, 1220, or 4080, strong VRMs, and we want it to look amazing. My current top pick is the ASUS Tough B650E Plus, with upgraded ALC 1220 audio, three full bandwidth M.2 SSD slots with covers, decent but not amazing rear USB connectivity, and Wi-Fi 6E. I also think it looks fantastic for around $180. The B850 version ups the speed of the four USB 2.0 ports, so they're all fast, and it adds Wi-Fi 7, but it typically sells for well over $200 US. It's very pricey for a value-oriented build. The ASRock B850 Live Mixer, it's a great combination of tons of rear USB connectivity, three full bandwidth M.2 SSD slots, great silver and black styling, upgraded ALC 1220 audio for around $190. MSI has the B850 Tomahawk with very similar features to the ASUS Tough B850 Plus, which as I said, feels expensive for this kind of build. And Gigabyte launched their B850 Aorus motherboards with only basic audio for some reason, though they did announce a revision 1.1 is coming, which is gonna upgrade the audio codec chip to ALC 1220, but we haven't seen those in the US market just yet. Currently, the B850 Aorus Elite with the more basic audio sells for around $200. So what's the best CPU cooler for the Ryzen 7600X? Well, for any of the Ryzen 5 CPUs that we're looking at, so the Ryzen 7500F, 7600, 7600X, or 9600X, we want to make sure that we're enabling Precision Boost Overdrive in the BIOS to get the best performance. That's going to require at least a budget tower air cooler for between $20 and $40 US. Anything from one of the many Thermorite Assassin coolers, right around $20, to the Cooler Master Hyper 212 or Halo versions, to the cooler that we used in our build, the id Cooling SE214 XT in white for about $18. These tower air coolers are more than enough with proper air flow, particularly if we're mostly gaming where CPU temps aren't really gonna get that hot. I think these coolers all look great, but if you wanna go with a liquid AIO, I'd recommend a 240 millimeter budget one. And there are now plenty available for as little as $45, like the Thermaltake Aquatic Aqua Elite V3 or V4 for around $45, the Vetru V240 for $60, or the id Cooling Frostflow for $50. I'll also leave links to these coolers and some other suggestions down in the video description. So what's the best SSD for the Ryzen 7600X? If you haven't had a chance to watch our best SSD for gaming 2025 video, it is linked down in the video description under our how to build a PC playlist if you want a deeper dive. Basically, there's no current gaming benefit from using anything faster than even a SATA SSD, but Gen 3 and Gen 4 NVMe SSDs are equally cheap, they're faster for other workloads, and they're easy to install. Gen 5 NVMe SSDs, they continue to be massively overpriced and a total waste of your money, especially right now with storage prices going up due to massive AI data center demand. For budget-focused builds, the Silicon Power UD90, Crucial P3, 
Team Group G50 or Western Digital SM5000, those are great drives that we've recommended in the past. For more premium builds, looking to add a DRAM cache to make their SSD just a little bit snappier when doing things like file copies and game installs, consider grabbing a drive like the Clev Crash C930, Team Group G70 Pro, or the Acer Predator GM7000. Right now, two terabyte drives are the best price per terabyte, followed closely by four terabyte models for those looking to add more storage. And this is not 2015 anymore. You don't need a separate drive for your operating system. A single large capacity drive is absolutely fine and will save you money. I'll leave several SSDs linked down in the video description. In the PC case, what we want here, it's good airflow, but we don't want to overspend too much. Now, ideally, we'd want at least two intake and one exhaust fan, though more airflow, it's always better. Most cases today come in either black or white options so you can customize your build. Now, great budget options can be had for as little as about $60, starting with micro ATX case options like the Okonos Aqua 3 that we used in our build, offered in black or white RGB, and now with a no RGB version that's $5 cheaper, it is a stunning atrium style case with two glass panels and a minimal footprint. The three ARGB fans are set up in a unique negative pressure exhaust airflow using the bottom mesh to intercept dust. If you don't like that, just spin the fans on top around for intake instead. It was super easy to build in and super cheap. I also like the Thermaltake View 170TG. It's very similar, it is slightly larger, but it also offers more fan mounting options for about $70. There's also the classically styled BitPhoenix Nova Mesh Micro ATX case in white or black with three ARGB fans. We've used this many times for around $60 or bottom to top Airflow Okonos Mirage 4 for around $60. For ATX size cases, if you go with an ATX size motherboard, the Montec XR for $70, it's an incredible value that we've used in previous builds with three included ARGB fans, including two reverse blade ones for side intake, or the Okonos Aqua 7 with six included ARGB PWM fans for just $75. And there's similar cases like the Thermaltake View 270. If you want to spend just a bit more, the Lee & Lee V100 is one of the best cases launched in 2025 with four ARGB fans for around $85. All these are linked down in the video description. I'll also throw in some others for you to check out. Let's talk power supplier PSU for short. If you haven't seen our how to buy a PSU 2025 guide, we cover how to size and buy the best unit for your build based on unit quality rather than the nonsensical 80 plus ratings. And I will leave that link down in the video description. Basically, I take the rated power draw and PC part picker of all the components. Then I multiply that by 1.5 to get the minimum wattage. Now, because of Ryzen 7600, it's so power efficient, many builds are not gonna require more than 550 to 750 watts using this formula. For more value focused builds around the $1,000 price point, I think a unit rated in the C tier on the SPL PSU tier list, it's probably fine like the Apivia Prestige 600 watt or the Corsair CX650M, but if you can, then I'd spend just a little bit more on a B tier or A tier rated units like the Montec Century lineup. Now I put together two build templates to get you started. The first is a best value build that uses the Ryzen 7600X with a budget tower air cooler, value focused B850 micro ATX size motherboard, DDR5 6000 CL30 non-RGB RAM a one terabyte budget NVMe SSD, a value micro ATX PC case, and the cheapest current 600 watt or better C tier rated PSU. Not including the GPU, that build comes in right around $600 US. For a more premium build that doesn't stray too far from value, I've swapped in the Ryzen 9600X, currently about $30 more than the 7600X, changed the cooler to a reasonably priced 240 millimeter AIO liquid cooler with RGB. I've upgraded the motherboard to an ATX size premium model. I've gone with RGB on the RAM at the same speed. I went with a Gen 4 SSD with DRAM. I added in an ATX size atrium style PC case and I upped the PSU to the cheapest 750 watt or higher unit that's at least B tier rated. The upgraded build without the GPU comes in right around $780. Obviously, if you want, you can spend more, but these templates should get you started and we'll leave both of them linked down in the video description for you to check out. Remember, check out everything linked down in the video description for current pricing and availability in your region and our how to build a PC playlist, including our guide on how to actually build a gaming PC and set up your PC after you build. If you got value out of this video, please give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. And we'll catch you on the next one.